Now, you have been following this entire process so far and are waiting desperately for me to apply a little bit of finish so we can see what this wood is actually going to look like. And I'm sorry, we're not quite there yet. There is one final little thing that I would like to do. Uh, well, there's several little things that I'd like to do, but uh, the one that I'm going to do before the finish is applied is play around with some magnets. These are pretty. They're very pretty. And to be honest, I don't want to put a whole bunch of screws. So, what I'm going to try and do, well, I'm going to start with these, which are little 3mm magnets, and possibly move up to 4mm. And there are, there are several things. For many, many years I've been wondering how to do this, and I finally come up, you know how it is, your, your brain just gels. And uh, after many years of, s sort of semi-thinking, or having it in the back of your head, it suddenly just happens. And the big issue with using magnets is that you need some way to get under the plate and lift it up. Or at least that's what I assumed. And that is not the case. And, uh, well, watch the rest of the video to see. Now, these little, well, it looks like copper actually, locating pins are rather amazing and pretty much essential for what I'm doing. I don't have any that are small enough so I'm going to uh, uh, well I'm going to be a little bit naughty or not naughty just <laughs> I'm going to mess around and we'll see what happens. So figure out where I want my magnet to be Drill a little hole, and that sits in the hole. That's in the right place. Point. And I now have a little hole to tell me where the magnets will join up. Rinse, repeat, and well, we've got to do this quite a few times now. Anything that takes the guesswork out of guitar building is all right in my book. Now, the little magnets I'm using are three millimeters. And again, I'm using a little spur bit. To install them in the cover. Now I'm going to be using super glue which does get a little bit messy but uh, is certainly the best thing for this job. You've got to be absolutely certain that they are all aligned the same way and they also oh no oh no there we go so I'm putting two or three of these little ones in and those were just sticking up above where I wanted them to be. There we go. So effectively the polarity of those three is, uh, is the same and once that's cured I can make sure that the magnets in that side are pulling instead of pushing. Which to be honest, is rather important, is it not? Clean up the uh, the magnets just a little bit, 
and those that is the correct alignment so basically those magnets need to go that way down in in my hole um, however seeing as my holes are bigger what I'm going to do is I would like to use these I've been I've been buying little magnets from various well eBay and all sorts of places over the years they are just just useful basically so what I want to do is I want to install these and obviously my hole is not uh, well my hole is round not rectangular so we get a scalpel blade and just mark out over the center of the hole how long these are and it's a quick chisel job just like so looks like the London Underground symbol there we have it magnets in there line the grain up properly and we've got one lovely recessed control cover now as I said earlier the issue actually is in getting it out I could get my fingernails under there but once I've got a finish on and all the edges are nicely rounded over that would be a problem and I could also make a finger notch to get my fingers in there but that's ugly. What I am in fact going to do is use another magnet. Big magnet in the middle and I'm going to make a tool for our client and uh, that will have a little magnet on there and you can just pick them off without any damage and without any visible screws or anything like that. And uh, Feel free to email me and call me an at genius because I'm very happy about this. Anyhow, uh, there we go. So I now have to do a whole bunch more magnets and, uh, and make a tool.